You are listening to the Car Pro Insider Podcast, episode 21, where we're going to discuss why you need to identify your target prospect and how to do so. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up? I'm Robert Wiseman, and I have helped car sales professionals from around the world sell more cars by building their personal brands, attracting high-quality car buyers, and becoming the go-to car guy or gal in their marketplace. So what does it take to become the car sales professional that people are lining up to do business with? This is the Car Pro Insider. Hey, welcome, 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 welcome. Man, as you know, you are in the Car Pro Insider Podcast. I am your right hand man taking you through this weekly automotive content for sales professionals just like you. That is me. I am Robert Wiseman, and this is the go to podcast for car sales professionals who are looking for proven strategies, outside of the box creative ideas, and the latest and greatest resources to help them step their game up and make things happen in automotive sales. This is episode 21, and I am so glad you're here again. If you're a first-timer, what up? Thanks for taking the time. Uh, Make sure you check out all the previous episodes. If you've been here before and you haven't subscribed to this podcast, bro, what's up? What are you waiting for? Go to wherever you like to listen to your podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you like to get down, YouTube, wherever. Uh, subscribe and also if you do have iTunes hook a brother up and shoot over there and hook me up with a review I really want to hear from you but let's get into this content you know where we're delivering it every Monday something some content that's actionable something hopefully that you can put into action that's going to help you accomplish your goals make money have fun in this awesome industry that we're in car sales what we're going to dive into today is focusing in and knowing who your target consumer is who's your target prospect right we're going to talk about why you should be doing this and then exactly how you can find out who your focus prospect is that you should be targeting who you're going to spend your time attracting all right let's jump in to this session so look, it really goes like this, and, and I'm sure you can attest and agree with me when it comes to this, that all clients are not created equal. All customers are not created equal. And what I mean is no matter how long you have been around this business, you have been in the car business, whether you're brand new or you've been around it for some years, you're a seasoned vet, you know that you have customers that you enjoy working with, some that are a pain to work with, that grind you up every chance they get for the money on the deal, give you crap CSI, don't send you any referrals, and they take a long time to put the deal together, and it takes a majority of your most important and valuable asset, your time. And so we have customers we enjoy, we have ones we dislike. Now the name of the game is you want to attract and get more of the customers you don't, that you do want, right? That you enjoy working with. Kind of only makes sense, you know what I'm saying? So the reason why you need to focus in and target your target and dream prospect is so you know how to get more of them right? Uh, If you're going to spend money on marketing and attracting customers, why wouldn't you want to attract more of the ones that you want as to opposed to attracting more of the ones you don't want? That all comes from knowing and understanding who your target prospect is. So when you're creating your marketing and your message, It's going to resonate with them. It's designed for them. That's everything a brand is about. Your personal brand is all about the target prospect, right? For a brand to be, a brand is only as successful as it's good as its clients are. So you want those first class A clients, you know what I'm saying? So you want to attract the clients that you want. You want to create messaging and branding that your brand that's designed to attract more of these clients and repel 
the clients that you don't want more of. Now, again, no matter if somebody comes into you to buy a car, like you're not going to push anybody away that's there to buy, right? I get that. But in our marketing and in our attraction, when we're putting messaging out, it's better to have a certain types of individuals in mind because the messaging will resonate. It'll be more powerful because if you're trying to talk to and attract everybody, you've heard it before, you're going to attract nobody. So that's what and why you need to find, dive in and find who this target prospect is, right? And that's what I'm going to go into. I'm going to give you three great tips and um, I guess little ex exercises you can do to help you hone in on your target customer, all right? All right, so you want to start with diving back into some of your past customer base. Now, again, if you are new, go as far back as you possibly can. Um, if you've been in the game for some time now, man, I'm going. To, I'm going to take maybe my last 25 and maybe even back to 50 deals, right, that I've had. I'm going to pull these individuals up. I'm going to pull up their notes and whatnot in my CRM. Make sure that I'm refreshed. I understand. I remember who this person was, okay? So, again, if you're new, just to grab it, go far back as you can, right? That's fine. Um, what you're going to do, because you can refine this, again, later as you become more seasoned to get more sales under your belt, all right? But this is just to get you dialed in and going a little bit all right so what you're going to do is we're going to take that chunk of past customers and once you've gotten refreshed with them and remember the individuals we're going to break them into three different categories okay we have your a clients your b clients and your c clients okay now of course your a clients are the people that can afford your product and services, right? They value you as an elite professional in automotive sales, which is why they send you referrals, by, have done business with you multiple times, and they are also enjoyable for you to work with, and they rarely ever complain, right? They pay you all the money, they're fast, it's enjoyable. Those are your A clients, okay? Now your B clients, all right, who you're going to separate the B are a little less capable to pay you more in premium for your product and services. They also do complain a tad here and there about silly little things that end up taking up way too much of your time. Now, these clients aren't bad, but they are definitely not your ideal clients, right? These are your B clients, okay? Now, C, C are just the time sucks, man. These are the worst of the worst. Yeah, they might have been a deal. But again, all deals are not creative equal. These people grind you up on price. These people might have bombed you on CSI. They might have complained to the dealership. They might have given you a, a poor Google review or dealer rater review, what have you. These are your C clients, the people you don't want to do business with. So again, we're going to put them into your A, your B, and your C. Your A are the primo. Of course, your B is, eh, they all right, they all right. C is the losers of the bunch, all right? So you're gonna dig in and take from those 25 to 50 old deals, you're gonna refresh yourself of those deals, the people, the individuals involved in it, by again, filtering through the notes and whatnot through your CRM, you should be taking some good notes, and then you're gonna break them down into this A, B, and C. Again, all of this in detail, uh, you'll be able to catch in the show notes at Robert Wiseman, W-I-E-S-M-A-N, dot com slash 21 in case you're having any issues following along or i might be losing you i hope i'm not i try to present this in as uh, easy fashion as possible but boom your a b and c clients you're going to break those client uh, break that client list of past customers down into these three sections that's your step one all right so now you have broken down client list into your A, your B, and your C's. So what I want you to do before we dive into this next step is throw those C's out. Forget them. We might still be able to move some of those B's over to A. Some of those B's possibly could be A's, but if your initial thought was that they were a C, bro, chances are they're a C. Let's dead them, get rid of them. Next, you want to dive in. Now, this takes some thinking, man. Like, this isn't the easiest thing. That's why a lot of car salespeople don't do it. But once you do do it, 
you start attracting more and more of these A clients. And that's how you sell less and make more money because it's not about your units on the board, bro. Like it's about how much dough are you taking home? You know what I'm saying? So now we're going to break in and dive in and look for shared characteristics that these some of these clients might all have i'm going to give you a few examples here and there will be more at the show notes robertwiseman.com slash 21 that's all the show notes and examples from this episode but let's look in for some shared characteristics you want to bunch them do any of these people share some characteristics like you know, are they in the process of rebuilding or establishing, reestablishing their personal credit? Like, do you work in a subprime market, subprime dealer? They have a strong program and you want to attract more of those type of clients. Some people are very, very um, good with working with those type of clients and there's a lot of money to be made there. So maybe that's a characteristic. Um, did, did a group of them, did they all give you great CSI, great reviews and they send you everybody they know, right? You know what I mean? Like they're sending you a lot of referrals. They paid you all the money. They've bought from you multiple times even. You know, there's a couple characteristics right there. Um, they, You guys have something in common, right? Whether it be a passion outside of, of work, right? Like that you guys share. Um, I don't know, like wrestling. You know what I mean? Like I love uh, pro wrestling. Maybe the, uh, a lot of these clients that I have in my A and some in my B, also we connected on that. You know what I mean? So there's several different characteristics to think about. Um, go through them and f see if that group together out of those A and B clients, some clients that share some, is there a more common characteristic that most of them all share that uh, more than another characteristic? You know what I mean? You want to group them together. You want to look for common characteristics. Those were just a few um characteristic ideas just to get your juices rolling i'll have more examples again at the show notes but that's what you want to do you want to classify them based off of characteristics see if there is some common characteristics amongst those a and some of those b's because that's going to help you understand more who your ideal client is look for people that have made multiple transactions with you look for people that have sent you multiple referrals already look for people that pay full price and don't grind you up on price, right? Look for those common characteristics and group those people together within your A, B, and C. Are they somebody that's looking to improve their credit, right? Is it somebody with immaculate credit? Are they educated research buyers that don't waste your time with silly questions and crazy complaints? So break them down and look for common characteristics, not even necessarily characteristic that you want them to have, but that they in fact have. Dive in, spend the time, find those characteristics, group those people together. That's number two. Okay, so number three, the number three common traits and commonalities that these clients will have that you can kind of figure out is who is your target prospect what prospects do you seem to have the most success with which prospects are you attracting now already before you've gone gung-ho into your branding and building your business within a business that'll give you a good idea of who you're already good with right people who already love you like you and like to do business with you so that's why we're looking for these commonalities this is how we're going to identify these people now with that whole list right you have everybody move those b's some of those b's that share a lot of those common traits that a lot of your a's will share because you'll see that in most cases, if you broke them down into A clients, meaning your best, B, meaning I, right, I, right, you know, they, they could be a little better, but they're I, right. and then C's, we already eliminated them, right? Because if you already think that they're a C, bro, they're a C, so let's get rid of them. We don't want to attract more than them. All right, so the next thing that you want to look to where they have some similarities is in demographics, right? Average household income, average age demographic, profession, you know, they're a business owner, what they do for a living, right? Are they all CEOs? Are some of them CEOs? They're, I mean, let's keep it real. Their gender, their nationality, even their religion, right? Those are all people that, you know, those 
demographics, that in detail and information about individuals can really help when knowing that can help you a lot in your marketing, in your branding and in your efforts to attract more of them. Does that make sense? Political views, private clubs that they might be uh, involved in. Are they tech savvy? Are they not tech savvy? So you just want to go into some demographics and more detailed information that you want to know about these individuals because these A clients that you've moved over here, these are your ideal client, right? There should be a lot of commonalities between the, these people for them to be in A, right? Because we've already looked for people that have common characteristics because we've got to get to know who this person is, right? That's what this is all about. Um, you'll find a list of these demographics that I'm talking about and just some ideas because there's so many. It's impossible to list all of the characteristics and then, in fact, the demographics and other information you need. But you see what we're doing here is it's a great way for you to get to know who your ideal client is. Because like I said, you've moved them into A's. You have that small, maybe a few people, maybe three, maybe two. That's okay doesn't need to be a lot of them it could be just one because that's all we need because then you're going to build your marketing and everything off that individual's buyer persona which in fact is what we're going to go into next week on the next episode of car pro insider is creating your buyer's persona once you do that and have that dialed in you it becomes easy to market and to attract these individuals because you know what to say how to say it when to say it where to say it, what mediums to say it on, you know, and that that's again, it, that's in next week's episode of the car pro insider podcast. Let me just recap these quick things again, robertweisman.com slash 21. There's going to be a lot more details breaking this stuff down. I just like to come in here, record a quick audio podcast for you, just kind of highlighting it, but it gets more detailed on the blog post. So look, go past as many clients as you really want to take up 25 minimum 50 is cool if you've been there for a while if you're new just take as many as you can if you got 10 that's fine break them down in a b and c read the notes in your crm if you have to get familiar with them come on you know these people you spend time with them you sold them a car so you know a little something something about them and you should be following up with them so you know them all right so break down into a b and c number two is it starts with Take and see, crumbling up, get rid of those names, all right? I don't care how many are on your A or how many on your B. It doesn't matter. Now, your Bs are okay. What we're going to do is we're going to filter out the good Bs and move to As and filter out the other As that aren't As by character, certain characteristic traits that they shared, like the ones that we uh, re reviewed. Um, were they rebuilding, reestablishing credit? Have they made multiple transactions with you already? You know, like those are the people I want more of, right? I'm obviously hitting on all cylinders with an individual that has bought from me multiple times, right? Have they sent me a lot of referrals? Boom, obviously I'm hitting on all cylinders if they're sending me referrals. Have they given me great reviews, great CSI, always giving me, you know, a great testimonial, always down for whatever. Have they, do they pay all the money? Do they not waste my time trying to grind me on price? Do they value my professional services, right? Those are all characteristics. Now, your characteristics might be different what you're looking for, but I'm looking for people like that. And I would assume you would be the same. You know, looking for people that are going to send you more, that are going to come back. They're easier deals because you connect because they're your target prospect, okay? And then number three is we're going to break them down even more and filter out others that, again, who cares? Anybody comes in asking for you, boom, you're going to sell them. I'm not saying you turn these people away, but through your marketing and through your branding, which the name of the game is to create this stuff so it works for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week on the web in order for you to get the, the true power of that you have to understand who the people are that you're trying to attract. So then we're going to break down into more detailed demographics that we're looking for common traits amongst the clients left around here. Um, is it where they live? You know, do they live in a certain neighborhood? Um, do they have a average household income or their income is pretty similar, right? Um, the ages, are you better with seniors? Are you better with, you know, young millennials? Are you better with first time buyers, right? 
um, marital status? Are you better with single? Are you better with married? Are you better with better with divorced? I mean, are those, you know, do those people ha- share that? They're all divorced. Um, tech savvy or not tech savvy? Are most of them tech savvy tech nerds? Or some of them like kind of clueless and like those extra features, they like having them there, but they're not real familiar with them, you know? And do they only buy certain types of unique vehicles like collectors or, you know, is it more of a, a hobby, you know, are you selling a product to them that's more of a hobby? All of those are demographics that are going to help you, you know, better understand your ideal client. Now, what, you, what, ha- what you're left with now with this list of A clients, it's probably a very short refined list with a few names on it, and that's fine. Because it's not about they all have to be that. No, because they're not all going to be that. But moving forward, let's hope the majority of them are because you put in strategies in place to attract more of these individuals. That's your ideal prospect right there who's left in those A's. Now you know a little bit about them. Next week, you don't want to miss this episode. We're going to go into building their buyer's persona where you really understand this individual like you know them, like they're your, your best friend. And that is going to make it easier for you to attract more of them. That's it. Get more details, more in-depth information regarding this at robertwiseman.com slash 21. If you haven't subscribed, please do so to this podcast wherever you like to consume your podcast. That's cool. If you have iTunes and you haven't written me a review, hook a brother up, man. That's all I'm asking from you. Again, this is episode 21 Car Pro Insider Podcast. I'm Robert Wiseman. You guys have a great week. Peace out. I'll see you next week with the buyer's persona.